Welcome back and welcome to section three, data onboarding. In this section, we're going to actually bring data from your Splunk instance into your Splunk instance. And so you can actually start to do something useful with the Splunk install that we completed previously. So we're going to cover in this video how to bring data into Splunk, how to set up Splunk to monitor a file on your local Linux system. We're gonna cover some basic searching of the newly onboarded data and also how to use apps to help us with field extractions. So first I wanna talk a little bit about how to approach data onboarding. And this is just basically the thought process and the mentality you should have whenever you're encountering data that you wanna get into Splunk. It's not uncommon to have to deal with a log type you've never seen before. So don't be worried about that. I have to do it all the time for various clients and it's likely that you'll be in the same situation at some point. So Basically, as long as a log is in a text format that can be read or accessed by Splunk, we can generally work with it. Splunk is really good at processing various text files, even compressed files, gzip compress files, or anything like that. So Splunk uh, is very good at handling various types of log files. Uh, some data sources, obviously, are easier to work with than others. So keep that in mind that some things are going to onboard really easily and others are going to take some work. but the good thing is, is there's a lot of log files that exist that other people have worked with, and you can pretty much leverage a lot of the work that's been done and techniques that exist in order to make this easier. So I encourage you, don't reinvent the wheel. Find something that works, modify it as you're needed, and then just go from there. So whenever you want to onboard a type of data, I like to say, do some research. Figure out what already exists for that log type and what you can do. So First, see if you've done this before. See if there's another instance of Splunk that has this data in there. See if there's an app that exists. And one resource for that is Splunkbase. So let's go there real quick. So this is Splunkbase, and it's basically a repository of all different types of Splunk apps. So a lot of times you can use this by simply searching for a type of data you want to onboard. Let's just say Cisco. You search for Cisco and there are 65 different apps that exist to help you bring on various Cisco log products. So like Cisco Umbrella, for example, or Cisco Security Suite. Each of these are different apps that come with Splunk or at least are available for Splunk. Some of these apps shown here are written and published by Splunk. And if they are written and published by Splunk, they're considered Splunk supported. Others are released by the vendors of products such as Cisco in this case, and other ones of them are even written by people in the Splunk community. For example, that Cisco Umbrella add-on for Splunk is actually something that was written by one of my coworkers here at Hurricane. The other thing you'll probably notice is that some of these apps are called apps and others are called add-ons, and there is a difference between the two. An app generally has visualizations and other things that'll allow you to see the data and work with it and produce results. Add-on generally provides knowledge objects, such as field extractions, lookup tables, and similar things like that. And that really allows Splunk to understand the data and make it searchable. So a lot of times you may need to install both, depending on your use case. But a general rule of thumb is always just consult the documentation for the app or add-on that you're looking to install, and that'll tell you what approach to take in order to bring data in. The other thing I like to look for is documentation available for working with the source. So you can find this just a lot of time just by searching the name of the product along with Splunk. And if it's available, a lot of times that will just show up. And a lot of blogs exist and other documentation from vendors exist for getting data into Splunk because that's something they want their product to be able to do. Other information I like to ask when onboarding data, where do we want to store the data? What index should this go in? How long do we need to keep the data for? Is there a compliance requirement where we need to retain the data for a certain amount of time? Or is it something that doesn't need to be kept that long? Uh, who should have access to the data? Is it something that only a certain team or group needs to look at? Or is this something everyone can look at? And also having a sample log file on hand is really useful especially if you're trying to get it into a production environment and want to test it in a lab like we're doing here. So, like I said, a test Splunk instance like the one we're using is a great way to test this. 
because basically it allows you to figure out all the settings you need and make sure everything works before you use it in production. So that way you can experiment with things, you can learn how apps work, you can learn the best way to deal with your data. And if you break something, there's no impact to your environment, no data loss, nothing to worry about. You can clean up your lab instance and kind of start over as needed. So definitely keep that in mind. So with that, now that we have an idea of what we're going to do, 